Okay, I am the last speaker. How are we okay? Ça va? Ça va. Up, stand up. <laughs> Stretch. <laughs> Lift toi, oui. Okay. <laughs> it is my goal to take a, a different uh, view a different approach to talking about the robot industry. We've seen several presentations about the graph going up and how exciting that will be. I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about how we will do this. Because I think that five years ago, if we saw the same graph, they would still go up and yet the progress has not been what everyone would hope for. But I think we are more mature, we have better understanding, and I would like to tell you my views on what will be required to achieve the growth. Many of us in the audience are roboticists. Many of us had a dream about how we are going to create the future. And I would tell you that in the past, many people had this dream to build humanoid robots, to build uh, incredible robots that would somehow change our world. That is not how we are going to achieve growth in this industry. We will achieve growth by looking at these people. What do they want? What does he want? What does he want? <laughs> he has a problem and it is worth money to solve. There is a better way to solve many problems through the use of robots. And my company, iRobot, took this idea and turned it into a pure robot company focused on solving real problems. Last year, we did 400 million in revenue. Okay. 700 employees, so we are started. The key to building an industry is to understand the value of the problem that you're solving and to attack the problem with a solution that makes sense. We cannot solve a 100 euro problem with a 10,000 euro robot. It makes no sense and doesn't help the industry. Our mission, therefore, is to find problems of sufficient magnitude and to create disruptive solutions because robots are expensive. So we need to find a clever way of using this technology to deliver the value. So let me give you an example of disruptive technologies, okay? Fire, the wheel, alphabet. And I think robots can be one of these disruptive technologies. Why is this important? Why does disruptive because disruptive technologies change how we think about the world. And robotics must be one. Let me give you a better example. Fire. Before fire, he ate us. After fire, we eat him. So I think that the goal is to take this marvelous technology to change how things work. So I will give you several examples. In 1988, the US Space Administration decided they would use robots to explore the universe. And so they built this robot. It weighed 2,000 kilograms and moved one half a centimeter per minute. It is more expensive to send this robot into space by a lot than to send a person. 
This is not disruptive. This is disruptive. Here is an approach to exploring space that, if successful, would change how we do things. This is a robot that was built uh, at JPL. It led to this project to build a robot which actually flew out in Edwards Air Force Base. This is a micro spacecraft. Uh, here it is in the test environment. They have mission control. This is very exciting. I was there. <laughs> you, can, you can see the robot uh, um, preparing. What we'll do, we'll launch, hover, move over, and land, which are all the critical elements of space travel. Everything else is coasting. Then when it's down, you'll see it deploys a small cocoon. The robot wakes up. <clears throat> stretches. <laughs> and explores. This robot demonstrated a disruptive strategy for space travel that led directly to the Sojourner rover, which led to spirit and opportunity and has forever changed how the world will explore our universe. This is important for robots. In many things, there is a better way. Let me show you another disruptive technology. In Afghanistan, there was a challenge of going into the caves. There are thousands of caves. People would tie a rope around a soldier and send him in. And if there was a problem, they would pull the soldier out with a rope. It's a terrible, terrible way of doing this terrible job. So we built a robot, the PackBot. <clears throat> we sent the robot in. And we found explosives. We found bullets that would, <clears throat> and they were unstable, and they could have killed many people, and the robot did it. We have sent over 4,000 robots over to help defuse the bombs that are set out to cripple our soldiers, to go into these caves. and. Hundreds, if not thousands, of these robots have been destroyed. And every time a robot is destroyed, it saves between one and 10 people's lives. And so we get postcards from thankful people. When the robot dies, you don't have to write a letter home. This is an important, valuable application for robots which is far more valuable than the cost of the robot that we sent. Another application for robots. Last year, in the Gulf of Mexico, south of the United States, there was a terrible disaster. This oil platform was destroyed, and millions of gallons of oil spilled into the Gulf. And we went and we cleaned up the oil on the surface. And it was said that, that that was all we needed to do. But through the use of robots, we were able to understand the environment in a way that we could never understand our environment before. We had created a disruptive robot, not a robot boat. This robot called Sea Glider, can travel underwater, 1,000 meters underwater, for over six months, halfway around the world, with one battery charge. So this robot could swim all around the Gulf of Mexico for a cost that is one one-hundredth, perhaps one one-thousandth the cost of trying to gather this data using a traditional mechanism. And so we were able to put this robot into the Gulf 
we were able to send it all around and discover underwater oil. And so that when the announcements were being made that the oil spill had been contained, we could show data that said, no, it is not. There is still oil underwater, which will surface over time. We can track that oil. We can tell you where it will rise to the surface. And we can clean it up again and again until it is gone. And this is important. And robots offer a disruptive way of understanding our world. We face climate change. Perhaps robots can help better characterize so we can be prepared. And robots can also do wonderful things. If you ask a three or four year old about robots, they all have opinions. Everyone has dreamed about how robots will change our lives one day. That is why we are here. But by thinking about the value and the cost, and by thinking about, OK, everyone wants a robot, so let's design robots that people can afford, we can create large businesses. So in 1962, this cartoon taught everyone what to expect. And then 40 years passed, and everyone learned that robots would never be real. But through the hard efforts of engineers, people like yourselves, we have begun to fight back. We have begun to show that robots are real. Over six million Roombas hopefully has created opportunities for all of the businesses here at iRobo, in Orobo, to create new markets. And lastly, robots offer the opportunity when new technology, marvels that have been created that make our life possible, like nuclear power, it's a wonderful thing. 80% of the energy in France is delivered by nuclear power. This is technology that has helped, but sometimes there are problems. And hopefully robots can help protect us when disaster strikes, like it struck in Japan. I will show you a quick video of a robot. This is the Warrior. This is a 250 kilogram robot capable of carrying 100 to 200 pounds. Here is a robot which is currently in Japan, which will perhaps be used to help bring a fire hose into the reactor to cool down the fuel rods so that they do not melt and perhaps also contain those fuel rods in water to reduce the radiation that <coughs> is causing so many problems to the entire nation. So my point of my few minutes with you is that we are trying to build an industry and we must be very careful because this industry, these graphs going up, will not happen if we focus on how cool our robots are. This industry will go up if we focus on the people who are served by the robots, what their needs are, how much they have to pay, and how to create a disruptive solution that will create the value. Thank you. Thank you.